Everyone, last time when I remember I've been to this platform, I think it was 2019, end of 2019. Let's say I don't remember if I came here in 2020 because uh, we start to be closed out like end of March, something like that. All our churches, and uh, it's more than two years. And last time when I remember when I came in Canterbury Church, this place was full. And even we had a small choir here, and even we had people in the back listening over there. Which today we can see more chairs and people, but uh, praise God, because we still have people who are still attended to our church. But uh, as well, let's thank, thanks God for putting the burden of uh, uh, leaders of this church who are still keeping and uh, providing every Sabbath uh, what needs, what necessary needs for this church and the church is running. May God be the glory. Today we'd like to uh, go on uh, Matthew chapter 14 and we'd like to read from chapter uh, from verse 22. To verse, uh, to, to, from verse 24 to verse 32. Uh, whatever is ready and wants to help me with the reading. Matthew chapter 14, verse 24 to 32. Matthew 14, verses 24 to 32. Let's read. Um, 24. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Tom. Let's bow head. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm just the vessel in your hand. Father, please put your Holy Spirit in me, and the word which I will present it will not be mine, but to be your. Just stay my prayer. Amen. 
probably is a known story which I've been choose for today is uh, Jesus on 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 sea, walking on the sea, uh, and um, probably sometimes we we have uh, even stories for children with that. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, 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 miracle as well to walk on the sea, uh, which today we can see some illusions doing like this, uh, but there's nothing real over there. We know it's a fake. But no one doesn't walk on the sea today, as Jesus did. And it's interesting because this story is coming from uh, from the same uh, same chapter where Jesus fed five thousand uh, uh, five thousand uh, men in in that uh, men in in, in 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 that time. Uh, and it was again another miracle. Yeah, it's impossible with uh, uh, five fish and two or two fish and five breads, for example, this is which one is, uh, to feed 5,000 people, yeah? It's, uh, it's a very, very hard. And let's try it today and you'll see it's impossible how you can feed uh, such amount of uh, people. And this 5,000 was only men's. This is, was, wasn't included children and, and women's. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, and after basically what was happening here, uh, Jesus was trying to uh, find a retreat and he went, uh, he went uh, somewhere in a hill and have a prayer. And so he sent the disciple to go without him. Uh, and, uh, and this story is starting when uh, they was looking and, and they saw like a ghost come, 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 come into them and they were scared. And they was wondering who is him, who is that? this but uh, after that they said uh, they, they they saw Jesus walking to them uh, <clears throat> probably uh, there was is I said to you this is not happening every day you cannot see anyone walking on waters like Jesus every day yeah it's something impossible even on that time it was it was real impossible even in our time as well, it's impossible to see like that kind of stuff. But uh, they, 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 saw, they saw Jesus coming to them. But in, a, in, a, in that time uh, of the story, the, the story was relating like it was waves, wind in that period. Uh, and, uh, and, and Jesus came in, in that period on a sea, calm to them. Um, and it's strange because one of the disciples asked permission to walk to Jesus. You know who was the disciple? Who, who name was? Huh? Who name was of, of the disciple? Peter, yeah? Peter. And, uh, and Jesus said, yeah, come, come to me. And the Bible said he was starting walking to him, yeah? He literally started walking to him. But suddenly he start sinking down. Uh, why do you think he was sunk, sunk down? What what was the reason for for for, for, for sinking down? Um, he drew his face away from Christ. He relied on his own strength. And yeah. He thought he was doing this himself. Yeah. 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 Good thing. Another another thought. Huh? Panic. Panic, yes. Yes. But well, the Bible said there it was a strong wind. Yeah. Faith. Hmm? Faith. Faith was reduced. Yeah, the faith was reduced down as well, yeah. But the Bible said it was a strong wind. Uh, <clears throat> uh, basically, yeah, all, all of the things what you said is true, because this is what is in truth. But when he started walking to Jesus, he was looking to Jesus. Yeah? Yeah? Imagine I'm walking and Jesus is in front of me. And the way and the wind is blowing to me. What is my first reaction to do? As a normal person, what is my first reaction to do? Trying to cover myself, no? Trying to, to protect from the wind. Basically, his side. From the Jesus start concentrated to the wind, which was blowing. Yeah, and you should, right, the faith, uh, 
he, he lost the, the confidence and everything in Jesus. And in that moment, he was just scared about that wind, what was happening, what was blowing to him. Uh, and the Bible says he starts suddenly to sunk into waters. Uh, is it just because this story, it was real, yeah? It, I'm not telling you a children's story or a parable, yes? It was real. This, this event was happening. But it's a lot of, um, how you call it, symbolistic in that story as well. This is why I said to you, we will find out what is that wind meaning for, 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 for this day. And, uh, and as well, we want to see what is the water's meaning as well. Who knows what is the water's meaning in the Bible? What, who knows what the water's meaning in the Bible? People, People nations, yes. And we find this in Apocalyptic chapter 17, uh, verse 15, yeah. And uh, if whatever is wants to read it, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Because Bible is explaining itself. This is why it's wonderful. The Bible is give you the hope. Revelation 17, 15. 15, yeah. From the New King James Version reads, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw when the hallowed six, six, when the hallowed six are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Amen. Amen. This is what the Bible is explaining, because I don't want to come uh, with my words, but this is what the Bible said, the, the water is meaning nations. With other words, when Peter starts sinking, he will start becoming again a worldly person. He will start, start drawing down to waters. Yeah? And let's let's bring this story to our days we are christians we are believers we are church of christ on the last day we are calling the <clears throat> we we have a last message which we're calling free and free angels message let's bring this story to us today what is happened today what has happened today Peter is symbolizing today our church, yeah? This is what is our church, where uh, he wants to come to Jesus, he was looking to Jesus, but suddenly start walking on the waters, but starting sinking down. Why? It's simple, it's in the story, because of the winds. Which blowing. What is the winds today meaning? Pandemic. Worse. Probably strong winds, what we have it even recently. Uh, earthquakes. And things can be etc. There's a lot of lots of things what can be winds. The problem what today the church is doing. The target, what is Jesus, they looking to wins. Today, why we don't see the people in the church, it's not because not pastor involving too much or not visiting, not because the leadership, I don't like it. It's because today, people look about wins. It's not only Canterbury which is facing like that. The whole church is like that. I know I'm doing this statement and I'm, I'm assuming this because big churches where it was 300, 500 members gathering, now they have 25, 50 people. Where? Where they are? Where are those people? And this is why I said to you, when you start looking to wins, you start sunk. 
sinking down to the waters. You start sinking down to the water. And I said to you what waters mean, meaning, nations. You still becoming worldly with other words. You not becoming a Christian anymore. You, you forgot about Christ forever. This is what is happening today with our church. And we wondering why, why people doesn't come. Worse will happen. Yeah, today we we facing with a, with a potential a third war, a new world war, which we I don't like it to say, it, but this is what can happen. Uh, it's fourteen thousand troops of NATO has been sent it yesterday to to defense the the, the NATO uh, uh, nations, and that means in case if just a bomb by mistake is dropping to. Uh, to a country like Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, whatever, Slovakia, whatever, who are, can be starting a new conflict. And basically, we're not talking about here a conflict between Romania, but we're talking about a conflict between a power versus other power. And uh, today we can see clearly nothing is safely in this world. Nothing is safely in this world. Like how we wake up in one day and you said the churches will be closed down. And uh, you're not allowed to come in, out from your houses, even to go to work, you're working from home, or you, you stay at home. No one didn't expect that one. And even Ukraine didn't expect, you know, like at 5 a.m. in the morning, somebody is bombing them cities. And it's a democratic, independent country. I'm not talking about Islam, where over there they're killing people one after another. They don't care about, they kill in name of Allah. In, in, in Ukraine, it didn't happen like that. And we can see here, with this country, anything can happen with any other countries like that. If somebody is awakening in the morning and wants to dominate this world, can do. That means the safety of this world is not guaranteed. And it's strange because this president Putin has been uh, has been signed an agreement. He will not he will not going to uh, to destroy or to invite invade the Ukraine. And he gone against of his what he was signing. Yes, that means that all paperwork what you, the leaders of this world is signing is useless. Is varnish. Is dust. But today, our church has a mission. The mission is not, uh, it's not going taking arms and fight with them. The mission is not, it's not like that. The mission is to look at Jesus. He said, yeah, but we're reading the Bible every day. We, we pray, we come into church. We look into Jesus. Looking to Jesus is not enough just to read it about. Because if you're looking about Jesus, do you think in Jesus' time it wasn't conflicts? It was. Because that, that Barnabas was, uh, was put uh, on choice between Barnabas and Jesus. That Barnabas, he just had a rebellion. And he was arrested. In time of Jesus it was. It was a lot of rebellion. Do you think it, it wasn't pandemic in that period or, or, or disease? It was. Because a lot of people came to Jesus to ask about healing. It was severe di disease like leprosy. Today we don't have this. But imagine your, 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 your part of your body start coming down from you. It was. But Jesus, what he done? This is why we need to look about Jesus, not about looking about theological stuff, uh, fighting with verse after verse. We need to look what Jesus has been done in that period. He was healing. He was con he was bringing the word of God to the people. But this is why we came, because before they, he feed the people, he was preaching, and after he feed, and after feed it, feed it the people as well. 
We saw Jesus involved in society. And it's strange because not Roman's empire wanted to be killed. But you know who wanted to be killed? But people from the church wanted to kill him. Because he wasn't like them. Even Roman's empire didn't want to kill him and, and put on a choice and even washing their hands because they didn't want to take this responsibility about killing Jesus because they didn't see anything wrong on him because he was a guy who was helping the society. Today, our church mission is to look at Jesus. Not like I'm looking about this screen and I see is turned off and nothing doesn't show to me, yeah? No, it's not, not like that. Looking at Jesus like, I want to become like Jesus. I want to do what Jesus has been done. I want to be Jesus today in this world. This is how the church needs to do it. Not waiting what president will telling us. Not waiting what pastor will telling us. Not waiting what leadership will telling us. But let's look about Jesus. And if you're thinking you cannot do anything today in this world, you're wrong, my brother and my sister. Because Jesus done, it was just one person done more than what today the church is doing in this world. I know probably I put, my, I put this church against it. But this is what the Jesus has been done. And that 12 disciple after when he was following, he done more things when we have a, a I think we have Thousands of thousands of pastors available, Bible workers available, and we're not doing what well, that then 12 has been done in that period. You know why? Because they look at the Jesus. This story is a very deep story. It's not only like a, a nice story where we can see the miracles and Jesus walking on water. I said to you, a lot of illusion trying to copy Jesus today. I saw from YouTube where they try, but that one is a fake because we, underneath of them they have something or they have uh, something, of, how we call it, things what they holding up. Yeah. Looking at Jesus, this is the mission of the church. But today with, with, uh, with the deepest regretting heart, I can see this, this church, I'm talking about Canterbury Church. I'm not talking about Oxford Church, I'm not talking about any churches, local churches, but I'm talking about as a Seventh day Adventist church, we sank in down. And we're starting from pandemic, or probably even before pandemic. But pandemic showing us we sank down. But this is not the end. If we start sinking down, this is not the end. Because in this story, Peter asking help from Jesus. <clears throat> even if you're sinking down, sinking down, even you you lose your target, you don't look about Jesus, okay? and you're still looking to the winds, and you're sinking down. We still have a hope as a church, as a member. Is you need to ask Jesus to help you. You need to ask Jesus to help you and raise your hand up. Because if you don't ask Jesus to help you, Jesus will look how you sunk him down. Not because he wanted you to sink, sink down. No. Because you wanted help. It's it's good because this story has been ending nicely. Peter was saved from the water. But what today we can learn from the, from this story is Jesus is always with us. Doesn't matter. The wind is blowing. If we sink in down, he is there. <laughs> Yeah, we don't, we don't understand because even over this pandemic where everyone was start crying and afraid about all of these things happening. 
Jesus was here. He was there. He was even with a family who lost the members. I was a young, I had a I, I have an uncle who was nearly on a death path. Thanks God he's he's recovering, but he still have problems on respiratory. Even probably most of us we had COVID as well, like a flu, like a little bit more severe, less severe. We had it. But that means doesn't it we our life has been stopped with here? Jesus didn't didn't isolate it from this world. He was in the world. This world, what is happening today, is just the beginning. And I would like to see what our church will do. I'm not talking about fighting, taking arms and fighting, etc. You know, no, this is not, not our mission. How we will involve. I know we pray. But we need to be like Jesus, acting in these events. And the religion people will be hating us. Because this is the true church. This is the true church who is going and fight. Fighting not with people, but fighting with the demons, fighting with, with people's needs and helping them. And people will hate them. <clears throat> Jesus today is holding his hand to help you. You as a person, you as a church, local church, wherever you are, is holding the hand and is waiting for you to ask his help. I don't know what is your decision today. Probably today you're thinking, I'm not thinking, I'm looking about Jesus. But my brother and my sister, I want to say you are wrong. Because not only you, but I and all of us, we are sinking down every day. Let's come together. Let's Ask Jesus to help us to get out from the waters and to be above all the waters and to be like Jesus. It's uh, wonderful because, yeah, Jesus said, Your lack of faith, this is why it's, it's happening like that. In verse, in verse 20, verse 31. But it's wonderful because when Jesus came into the boat, everything stopped. The waves, wind, everything. I don't think it's something wonderful in your life when Jesus is coming. I don't think. Even all of this. Uh, leaders of this world will prom promise you the, the peace of this world is nothing compared to what Jesus can give you. He said, the peace which I give it to you is the peace where you cannot have it from nowhere. It's inside peace. It's inside peace. Peter learned the lesson. Peter learned the lesson in that day. He needs to look about Jesus. Because later on we can see him doing his mission, doing, working with Jesus. Let's invite you today Jesus in our boats. Let's invite Jesus in our churches. Let's invite in Jesus in our families. Because Everything today is sunk him down. As soon he will take it us from the water, he will come in our boat. Our boats can, I said, we can be our lives, our family, our churches, our workplaces, our businesses, whatever we have. He will come. 
and the wind and the waves will be changed. My, uh, my wish for you today, my, 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 my love, lovely brothers and sisters, is you, together with me, to look at Jesus. And now when I came in this church, I saw a lot of wrong things, because I, I didn't born in this church. I saw a lot of wrong things. And every time people said, you need to look about Jesus. You need to look about Jesus. I didn't understand what does that mean. I was looking around at me and said, well, what are you doing? X and Y said, but you need to look about Jesus. I know this is the instruction. You need to look about Jesus. But even the people who told me you need to look about Jesus, they didn't know what it means looking about Jesus as well. Can't help. Today I'm not telling you to look at the Jesus how I said how you're looking about this screen. My invitation for you, together with me, Let's look about Jesus, how he wants to look. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Powerful. Thank you, Elder Atta. Let's ignore the wind and not sink in the waters by looking at Jesus. What a powerful message. Our closing hymn tells us to turn our eyes upon Jesus. Hymn 290. 290. You could stand up as we sing.
Father, thank you for mercy me and for your goodness what I'm showing up us every day. Father, thank you because like Peter we sink me down. Lord. And thank you for your mercy hand what is taking us and drawing us from these waters. Father, please forgive me us because we turn our eyes not on you but on these winds which is surrounding us. Father, please, make us to look again to you as we've been baptized and we promise to be with you, promise to be part of your people, Father. Make us that promise to be in us today. Father, we ask in you to show us what the plans you have it with us in this world. We see the events is falling one to another that make us to be strong and to continue your last work in this world. As we have a week ahead, we ask you to be with us and to make us to be a light whatever we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our divine service. We have uh, lunch served, so please stay and share and uh, socialize as we decide how we're going to continue focusing our eyes Amen. on Jesus. So let us pray before we go out to eat. Heavenly Father, thank you for the food of life that you have fed us with this morning, this afternoon, from your seven filled out. Now that we're going to eat the physical food, we pray that you pray that you bless it. May it strengthen us, Lord. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Amen.